Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Texan Entertainment News. Grab your popcorn and turn off your cell phone. I mean, unless you're using your phone to watch it. Today we're talking about movies. We'll give you a bit of news about the movie industry and then we have a very special interview with an important guest. Let's get to the news. Screen Rant reports that Joseph Gordon-Lovett is set to star in and produce a movie based on Jim Hansen's Fraggle Rock franchise. We haven't seen these little guys in ages and now they're hitting the big screen. It's apparently been in the works since 2011, but today is the first day we've heard any specific name drops. Levitt will be helping make it the movie alongside the Jim Henson Company with New Regency. Also from Screen Rant, there's finally a release date for Disney's live-action Beauty and the Beast. Don't get out of your seat just yet. We still have a while to wait. It won't be hitting theaters until March 17, 2017. It's currently got a star-studded cast, and it's confirmed to have the songs from the Disney animated version and some of its own. We'll report more on it as it comes out. Now for a Texan Entertainment News interview. Take it away, Jack. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another interview with Texan Entertainment News. I'm Jack Cochran here. Um, how would you introduce yourself, sir? I am Michael Barker, and I am the co-president of Sony Pictures Classics. So, we have a couple of questions for you today for everybody. We talk a lot about movies on Texan Entertainment News. We love them. We have at least one or two movies on every single episode. Now, the movies you work on are not necessarily the ones that you'll hear on Twitter all the time, the, the more uh, popular out there movies. The ones you work on are more indie films and documentaries. Is that correct? Well, there are two different kinds of movies being made right now. Uh, the the mainstream studio movie that is released on thousands of screens on the same day and the other type of movie is the independent film which is released in a platform release which means it's released in a much smaller way at the start however it can very uh, easily not easily but it, it often becomes a mainstream movie over time so it's, uh, I really do do the kind of movies that uh, are talked about on Twitter, but usually they're talked about several weeks in as opposed to opening weeks. Movies like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which open on eight screens on the opening day, but then grew to thousands of screens nine weeks later, or Midnight in Paris. It opened on eight screens on opening day, and it grew to somewhere around a thousand screens after four weeks. So it's, it's a different mindset than this wide opening day release. But the fact of the matter is, in a lot of ways, these films are the ones, the independent films are the ones that become evergreens. And at the end of the day, after the, the video, the VOD, the TV cycles, the streaming cycles, in a lot of cases, those independent films will end up be, being seen by more people than those films that open wide on opening day. <coughs> because the goal with the independent film is to become an evergreen. It's to become a, a movie that's watched year in, year out. That's the goal. The goal of that mainstream wide release on opening day is not necessarily the same thing. So with all these streaming services and all of these festivals and competitions that are out there, these indie films are experiencing a lot more growth and they're experiencing a lot more platforms for them to grow onto. Which one of these movies that you've worked on would you say you think experienced the most growth in its run? Well, the most growth is, was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. We've had a lot of successes, Midnight in Paris. This last year, between Whiplash, Foxcatcher, we're right now still Alice is a, is a big, it's growing every week. Um, the idea that still Alice, this movie with Julianne Moore, that's a very serious drama about Alzheimer, onset Alzheimer's, will ultimately do $20 million is pretty much an amazing feat. So um, I've had many movies that have had big growth possibilities. In the documentary area, a movie like Searching for Sugar Man, which started very small and just gained a following and has a bigger following every year. Same with Inside Job, a documentary we produced about the economic implosion of 2008. It's, it's, it, its followers continue and grow. 
Which was the first movie that you worked on in your career with Sony Pictures Classics? Well, the first movie we had at Sony Pictures Classics was uh, Howard's End. Um, we had invested in the production and it opened at the beginning of 1992 and it went on to the following year to win four Oscars and uh, or win three Oscars and be nominated for Best Picture. So that was our first film there. But my partner and myself, Tom Bernard and I, have been together since the early 80s. We started at United Artists Classics for a few years. Then we formed Orion Classics, and we were there for nine years. And then we formed Sony Pictures Classics. And the fact of the matter is, over those 34 years, uh, we've kind of uh, uh, grown over that time. So you put out documentaries, animated films, romance films. Is there any one genre that you think you put out more than any other? I don't know. Um, we try. We pride ourselves in being as eclectic as possible. So any type of movie that a big studio might not finance and release, we cover. We pride ourselves in having a documentary or two a year or an animated film every couple of years. Foreign language films, we pride ourselves with having th at least two or three or four top foreign language films uh, of the year. And then the American independent films make up the rest of it. And uh, so I couldn't pick one genre over the others. I think what's important to emphasize is we've always been director driven, auteur driven. And our decisions are made, are guided by that, by those directors. We've had many Woody Allen films, many Almodovar films, um, going all the way back to Kurosawa and uh, so many filmmakers from around the world. We've had a few Todd Haynes films. Uh, um, we've worked with so many directors w that we want to stick with. Your films that you've worked with, like all of these movies, they've gone on to win a ton of awards. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many awards you've won? To be honest with you, I'm not sure how many we've won. I, I do know how many nominations we've had because uh, someone, uh, someone toted it up recently after this last Oscars, and we've had 158 wow. nominations. Yeah, it's a lot. It's really I impressive. I was kind of shocked when I saw it and saw the number. Which of your films uh, have had the most nominations? Well, I would say Crouching Tiger had the most nominations. Um, we've had several nominations for Best Picture. This year was Whiplash. A couple years ago was Amour. We had an Education, Midnight in Paris. Capote was a big picture for us. Um, Howard's End, of course, and Crouching Tiger. So, I. I you know, when you, you receive a nomination for Best Picture, it really helps the life of a movie long term. Right. And so the audiences just get bigger and bigger once that happens. I mean, Whiplash, it was always the little engine that could, this small, kind of low-budget film. And it started okay, but it just kind of grew and grew and grew. You know, I've been here all day, and I've already run into several students that's the film they asked me about, Whiplash. So it's a movie that's known in Stephenville. Whiplash is a movie that I've seen trailers <laughs> for it on YouTube. Yeah. I've seen trailers for it. I've heard radio stations talk about it. And a friend was actually the one who introduced it to me. Uh, I had a friend back at home, James, who actually showed me the trailer and said, you've got to see this. This looks good. Is the word of mouth. Right. You know, that's how you make money on a movie because it's not really expensive advertising that causes word of mouth. It's this kind of infectious talk that causes people, motivates people to see a movie because they've run into a certain number of people that tell them they have to see it. Right. That brings me back to the question that I finally remembered. Um, how would you say marketing has changed for these independent films over the last you know, couple of decades? Well, I think the big change is the social media. And I think audiences are becoming more and more sophisticated as far as films that they know about and that they see because of the social media. <coughs> and the independent film, it's always been very high risk to overspend on an independent film. 
because so few of them can turn into what these big studio films can turn into. Social media, the cost of advertising on social media, it's so much less uh, than the cost of advertising on television and newspapers and print. And uh, that has helped so many movies get into the eye of, of, get in front of the eyes of audiences that would not have paid attention to those movies before. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice that you'd like to give to college students who would like to work in the film industry? See as many movies as you can. Yeah, understand this sense of film history. I realize it's very overwhelming that you may not know where to start. I saw a list yesterday. Martin Scorsese made a list of the 85 movies you have to, essential movies you have to see in your lifetime. I think it's important to uh, check out the uh, catalog of the Criterion Collection, where they pride themselves in some of the best movies ever made. It's important if you want any piece, if you want a profession in the entertainment business, it's important to have that sense of history because that sense of history and the knowledge of those films and finding your own voice in why you like this one but don't like that one and you can talk about that intelligently, that will get you far because that kind of knowledge is, is power in a way. Okay, I've got one final question for you. Um, what can we look forward to coming out in the next coming months, next coming years with Sony Pictures Classics? Well, we have the new Woody Allen film next summer. It's called Irrational Man. It's really wonderful. It's with Joaquin Phoenix, it takes place on a college campus, and Emma Stone and Parker Posey. And it's just astounding that Woody Allen every year can come up with a new fine film and this is a really one of his really great ones. Um, we have a film from England called Testament of Youth. It stars one of the stars of Game of Thrones. It's, it's in the Downton Abbey genre and uh, uh, that would well, be a perfect movie to open in the summer as an alternative to um, the big blockbusters. And then we have a movie starring Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo is one of America's finest actors. Yes. We had him in Foxcatcher this last year where he gave the spectacular performance. He was also in Normal Heart and To Begin Again and so forth in the last year. But the movie we have coming up starring him, it's called Infinitely Polar Bear. It's written and directed by uh, a, a new director. Her name is Maya Forbes. It's, it's quasi-autobiographical, and Mark Ruffalo plays uh, a father who has uh, a bipolar disorder, and he is taking care of his two kids. And Mark Ruffalo gives one of those performances. I would not be surprised if he's on the short list for awards next year. Okay. I'll have to see that one. All right. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate you, you having in Jack. here. Uh, it was very nice meeting you, sir. Nice meeting you, too. Now back to you. Thanks for tuning in. It's been fun, and thanks for not letting your phones go off. We don't have any previews to give, but we do have some credits. Today's show is produced by Alejandra Aragin and Justin Pack. Have a great day, Tarleton Texans, and no texting during movies.